Okay, we are moving on to uh, the second practicum out of three in the imagery analysis section for project four. Um, so we're in this part two of the project four uh, description. And uh, for this, we're going to be working in grass again. And you'll need to download this zip file, which is a grass location in a UTM uh, WGS84 CRS. Um, specifically, it's zone 33 north. And this is uh, the zone for Calabria for our project area in San Pasquale, which we used way back in project one in QGIS. Now we're going to be working in the same area, same exact place uh, for project four. So of course, you know, just uh, click through on this. It's uh, saved in Google Drive and downloaded to your computer somewhere. And uh, what you're gonna wanna do is to make sure it goes into your GRASS data, your GIS database, wherever you were working um, uh, previously, um, or a new one, doesn't really matter in this particular case. Here it is. And I just, you know, on my computer, I right click on it to extract here and it will open up uh, or it will extract the, the location which of course if you recall is just a folder with at least one interior folder a map set called permanent all caps and there's a bunch of stuff in here um, including a, uh, some satellite imagery data that we will work with so again in grass we typically don't mess through the file browser instead we can start up grass which I already have done in the background over here and uh, you will get to the first tab in GRASS 8, the data tab, and just make sure that, that you know, I have three different GIS databases, three different uh, folders where I store some GRASS data in it. Um, this is the one that I opened up the location, or I saved the location to, downloaded it and unzipped it to, and here it is right here. Uh, it may not be already selected for you. You may be already working in another GRASS, like the Wadi Hassa one might be in here. So just uh, just make sure that you see it, and if you don't see it, you can hit, again, reload the grass locations, and it will show it. And then um, what I'm going to do is uh, create a new map set in here so that we're not working in the permanent one. We never want to work in the permanent one because we want that to be just where our base data is, and we draw from it, but we, we don't really want to be in there unless we're uploading or um, importing new base data to work with. And today we're not going to be doing that. We're just going to be working with this data. So let's go ahead and create new map set in the current location. And I'm going to call this um, false color because that's mostly what we're going to be doing today. Uh, so there we go. And it should automatically select false color. So uh, we can add layers from the layer panel. now. Since we only have just a permanent map set, by default, uh, it will have permanent already selected. Once we get more map sets, then we'll have to do this map set access thing again, which we do all the time in these tutorials. So uh, should be OK. Let's just go ahead and see what we have in there in terms of rasters. And you'll see that we have our old orthophotos color composite. This is the same image that we were using in QGIS to do our digitizing in project one. Uh, we also have a SRTM DEM, a 30 meter DEM, okay? And then the rest of the, the stuff that's in there uh, is sentinel imagery. And I've labeled them by band number. So this, all this stuff in the beginning, it relates to the mission and the date and time of acquisition of the imagery. And then we have the band number. I've selected the most useful bands because there's a lot of bands for the Sentinel. I'm just trying to save some space for you. And then the spatial resolution. Some of them are 10 meters and some of them are 20 meters. So let's just take a look at band two and we can see there it is. Um, and if I uh, move myself out of the way and make my window bigger, in this case it's a long, narrow, computational region, so I can just kind of make a long, narrow grass window here. We can actually see, if I zoom in on this, that it's pretty high resolution, so I kind of maybe went a little too far. I'm zoom out just a little bit. But yeah, we can see some pretty good resolution. You know, having been there myself, I can say that, yeah, this is looking about right. 
And we can always make sure that we set the computational region from that particular map just so that everything looks good. But if we add over the top of it our orthophoto that we're used to working with, remember this orthophoto it was much higher resolution imagery, uh, technically a color imagery, so three bands, red, green, and blue, but I composited them together to a single color image here in grass. And so if we zoom in, oops, I'm still on the zoom out. So if we zoom into an area like this, we can see there's much higher uh, resolution in the orthophoto than there is even in the 10 meter sentinel. But the benefit of the sentinel is that we have multiple bands, more than just red, green, and blue. So that's really what we're going to work with um, as we go forward. So here we are. We are in our false color map set and we want to start doing some false color stuff. So the first thing to do is to look here in the project description and especially you're going to want to look at these tables. We have two tables. One describing, I just truncated the table for the bands that I uploaded for you to work with. Blue, green, red, visible near infrared, visible near infrared, short infrared, short wave infrared, right? And then some common band combinations and what they can do for you over here. So I want you to first just sort of look at the uh, grayscale imagery for each individual band like so. And we can zoom back out again uh, till we get to a resolution where we feel pretty good. And you know the basic thing is just to pan around and get a sense for it. This is band two that I added and band two um, if I move this over, we can see the table as well. Band 2 is the blue light band. And so now I can take a look at maybe band 3 and click OK over here. And that's the green ba uh, light band. And I can take a look at band 4. And I can see that that is the red uh, bandwidth. I can see how the luminances kind of differ between all of these. So, uh, you know, spend some time taking a look around in these kinds of, uh, at these things and just see what you can see in the different bands, you know, continue all the way up through all of these near and far infrared uh, bands and just see what looks different, you know, between one band and another. So that's your first task for you to do. Once you've done that, once you've become kind of comfortable, in, uh, you know, with the, those differences, what I want you to do is uh, I'm just going to zoom out completely so that we can see the whole deal here. Is to start by creating your first color composite. So remember, this is the high resolution one that we've been working with in the past. Now we're going to make one from these Sentinel bands. And we're going to use this uh, special tool. So this is our normal add raster map. We go right next to it, add various raster maps. And one of them is add RGB map layer. So if we click on that, we get D.RGB. And we can actually select the bands for the red, green, and blue. So in this case, we're going to pick uh, band 4 for red, band 3 for green, and band 2 for blue, which is exactly what it says in our table over here. And let me just get everything back up. And uh, you can take a look and see what else there is. There's really nothing else in this. We'll just hit OK. And we'll take a look. And so the first image that you create, it's not going to look all that hot, right? The, uh, it's going to look probably dark. And uh, the composite, you can see if we zoom in, the colors are mixing, but it looks like either dark or kind of you know not true to the colors um, so we're going to need to fix the individual uh, grayscale images like so and there's a couple of ways that we can do this we can do it uh, directly um, in the R colors module by defining uh, one of these special you know gray uh, grayscale color scales like the equalization one might be one that we can do it or we can use from the imagery tab um, we can go to manage image colors 
and we can use the eye colors and hands. So I will show you how they both work. So let's first start with our, our, our colors. And right now I'm working with band four and I'm just going to pick the gray equalization and hit run and you will actually see it stretch. Now this may not work for our particular uh, image, but let's just try all those three, right? So, so that was band four, and then we would do band three, and then we will also do band two, like so, hit run. And when we display a new color, oh boy, yeah, that kind of took it too far the other direction. So uh, we may need to go back here and choose a different one, uh, maybe grade 255, and hit run on this. Uh, and of course, until we do all of them, we're not going to get a, a nice looking color map. But let's give it a shot and see. so I don't have to keep clicking every time. And in this case, it's, it seems to not work. So uh, maybe gray 255 wasn't it. You know, you have to figure this out. We can try gray log and see how that works. Nope, that's not going to work real well for us. So you can see doing it this way is a little bit of a what, what the English would call a faff, right? You just kind of got a faff around through it. We can try doing histogram equalization this way. Let me undo that. And we're still going to get a pretty bad result, right? So let's go ahead and uh, just remove what we did by uh, checking this remove existing color table and doing, you know, all the three colors that, uh, uh, sorry, three images that we messed around with. So now if we go back uh, we're basically back to where we began. Let's use instead eye colors enhance. And here it's a little bit of a smarter algorithm. So we pick our red, our green, and our blue bands again. And we have a couple things that we can check. So let's just try the default and see what it looks like. We may have to redisplay over here. So we get a better result than what we got when we did the histogram equalization with just the our colors. Still not looking too great. So let's try to click this preserve relative colors adjust brightness only. And hit it again. And now we're looking a little bit better. So if we go back over here and we can kind of compare the colors in our old ortho photo, we're not getting too far off the mark. We could probably uh, see if this check mark, the next one that says extend colors to full range, does something. And it may bring us back to what we were looking at. We could uncheck the other one. So Let's just see, that's not looking. And then finally we can reset, but that probably is not going to do anything different. Yeah, in this case it gave us nothing. So let's just hit this middle one. And for now, we'll call this our best attempt. Now what we can also do is a combination of these things. So we can try and go back in to uh, this and we can try and pull you know pull the scale a little bit more and in this case it probably didn't work so we'll just rewrite over it this way <laughs> and take a look and I think this is about as good as we're gonna get for this um, natural color composite okay so this is again we're just using this real simple convenience layer we, if we're happy with this, we might want to uh, essentially blend it down back into one color map. And the way we do that is we go to the raster menu and we go to the manage colors and then we look for the create RGB R dot composite. And here we can pull in again our red 
our green and our blue and we have to give a name for it so we'll call this real color composite like so and again we want to make sure since these are 10 meter maps let's just uh, set the uh, computational re region to align with one of them so we don't accidentally do it at a coarser or unnecessarily fine resolution and I'll show you about these levels we have some ability to tune the the result but let's just hit run with the defaults and what we can see is we get exactly what we were looking at we basically get a single map that it is now really in our map set as uh, just a single map there it is under our false color map set real color composites a single map color now um, all three of those channels were combined red green and blue to produce this image that we're looking at here um, now so that is uh, just with the defaults if we want to we can mess with the balance between red green and blue by changing these numbers over here by default it gives an basically an equal number of slots for each color red green and blue if we feel like it's balanced towards one or more of those individual colors we can correct that here manually um, we can also choose to get a little bit nicer um, you know um, overlays in places with complex patterns by using dither I tend to not do that and potentially use closest color can also help now doing this is more of an art than a science so I tend I tend not to unless I'm I, I really have a good sense of what I ought to do but basically what you got to do is uh, put specific numbers in each of these where you weight one a little higher than the other and then will it will show it a little bit more in the output so just as an example I'll put 40 on the red and then I'll put 30 on these other ones and we'll just uh, on the optional tab click overwrite just so we override our color composite that we're already looking at and in this particular case you can see it changed the colors just a little bit uh, making it a little bit redder so if I bump this quite a bit we ought to see the color change even more in this case it didn't really change all that much um, I might have to delete this one here yeah it's not really doing too much for us in this thing I wonder what happens if I go an extreme okay I might have to refresh yeah, it's not really doing too much in this particular case so my advice is to just leave this alone for your R composite okay so that's a, a natural color and that's R composite to make these files permanent um, it's as convenient more or less to do this if you just want to look at it once but if you like what you've got and you want to save it so it's always there use the R composite to create the composite image um, what I'm asking you to do is first do that real color uh, image and then I want you to create some standard false color images which you can get to in this uh, in this second table over here so let's just take a look at this color infrared where we essentially uh, drop the blue and scoot the red and green down and put the infrared in place of regular red so remember from our discussion about false color imagery we're just tricking the display to show us patterns in uh, bands of light that we can't normally see so instead of blue we're gonna put green where blue is in the display instead of green we're gonna put red where green is gonna be displayed and instead of red we are going to put uh, band 8 which is near infrared and it looks something like this now we are probably going to want to run our eye uh, colors enhance again and, and we want to make sure we're checking the same bands into the same channels so the green and the blue channel 
the red in the green channel and band 8 the near infrared in this and just hit run like so to redisplay and now we are definitely getting much more red <laughs> out of this so this is definitely closer to what probably ought to look like uh, let's see what happens when we click on that guy yeah, that's a little bit more subdued, but I kind of like it for this, so we can actually see some more details in terms of the uh, patterns here. And again, the brighter the red, the healthier the vegetation that we are looking at, and that's what this particular band combination is for. Now, let's try the shortwave one, where we have 12, 8A, and 4. So let's go ahead and uh, pull up, whoops, pull up all of our grass stuff again, and Get that going. So here we're going to put four, and here we're going to put eight A. There it is. And here we're going to put twelve. Click OK on that, and we can see it's green. And we're going to go back to our eye colors and enhance, and we'll just go ahead and do the same thing for eight A. 12. We have both of these checks right now. Let's we'll just leave that alone, see what happens. And when we redisplay it, uh, maybe we'll just check that one. So it's a little bit brighter over here. I'm not sure which one of those I like a little bit better. Yeah, this is probably a little bit more realistic, just the extend colors to the extents. And we get a nice pattern uh, where the green in this case is showing us the health of the vegetation. So we have a couple more in there. Um, we can do, let's do this one for Geology 12, 11, and 2, and just see what that one looks like. And again, you'll want to take a little bit more time uh, to do that. So we'll put uh, 12. 11 and 2. And what do I have to do again? Our colors for that. 12, 11, and 2. That looks a little washed out. little bit bright so somewhere in there and again the brightness is going to indicate underlying geology so in this case we have a lot of vegetation cover so um, probably some of that is down to vegetation now let's go back to this sort of more washed out one but yeah we can actually see now some of the stream beds which have a different kind of lithology exposed and some of these areas with bare soil are definitely popping out to the trained eye with these colors okay so play around with those and the last thing that you're going to want to do is to create the uh, at least the ndvi and the ratio for that is band 8 minus band 4 over band 8 plus band 4 and again, it uses, uh, produces a scale between minus one and one, all relating to vegetation health, where one is healthy and minus one is really not healthy. So there's a, a description of how to do that over here using the tool IVI, which stands for I Vegetation Index. And that is again under the imagery. And uh, I gotta remember exactly where it is. Yeah, satellite image products vegetation indices you can see there are some other indices you can do here but we use IVI and you can choose a whole bunch of stuff and again as almost normal to you now you click on the manual to figure out what all of these ones are but the standard one the very common one and the one that we're gonna do is the normalized difference vegetation index and uh, what we're going to want to do is give this the name NDVI, like so. And the inputs, we're going to pick the 
proper bands for the different uh, channels that they want here. So we're going to give it the red. Near infrared is going to be band 8. Green channel going to be band uh, 3. Uh, you know, it's not going to need all of these, but let's just give it to them anyway for the end, because for the NDVI, you just in this case need band 8 and band 4. But uh, in case you want to calculate some of the other indices, you may need some of these other uh, settings here. And that's basically all you got to fool with. You hit run. And there's your NDVI map right there. By default, it gives it uh, a special color scheme. And so if you add in your uh, raster legend for the NDVI, you'll be able to see that uh, the values should should be within uh, minus one and one. In this case, the max is 0.72. And uh, we got some areas where there's no vegetation and those are getting real close to zero, either white or brown over here. And we have some cases with pretty healthy uh, vegetation, which are close to the max in our case, which is 0.72, which is close enough to one, which to basic says this is no super, super, super lush vegetation in this very dry Mediterranean environment. So that's pretty useful for us to be able to, to sort of map out the land cover very quickly. Uh, if we had higher resolution imagery, like the quick bird or something like that, we could even be doing this in farm fields and maybe the underlying uh, strength of the NDVI vegetation index would show us something about subsurface features because vegetation health, if it's all being watered equally, might relate to subsurface anomalies like walls or pits or something like that. So that's basically it for false color and vegetation indices. When we come back next time, we will do the last thing, which is unsupervised image classification in grass.